Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick and welcome to the channel. It's Tuesday, making it Lightroom Tuesday. So we're going to talk about the new features in Lightroom 7.3. So Lightroom Classic CC 7.3 is out today. There's a couple of new features. I'm going to show you them and I'm going to talk about them first and then I'll show you them. And then there's one at the end that I'll just show you rather than tell you about it. So the big, big thing, of course, is that profiles have now moved into the basic panel and there's way more of them. And not only that, but there's even profiles that can be applied to non raw files like JPEGs and TIFFs. So they've changed from kind of the standard DCP profiles, which are DNG camera profiles, to XMP profiles, which can be put on top of DC profiles or DCP profiles and then used uh, without DCP profiles, which means you can apply them to non-RAW files. So it's great. So you've got creative profiles uh, as well as the basic camera profiles. So as I've explained before, camera profiles are how Lightroom renders files, you know, basically the whole file, what it looks like when it does the conversion. So usually it's Adobe Standard, which is a bit of a flat looking file. And it's kind of there so that all files from all cameras look the same, but it's not necessarily a good rendition. Uh, a lot of other uh, uh, raw processors, that's the word I'm looking for, will give you a much better default rendition. And the idea with these profiles is just to get a better one. So we'll talk about it in a second. Uh, Dehaze has also moved, we look at that. And uh, the tone curve has gotten bigger, so you can actually see a little bit more detail. Face recognition has a little bit of a jump, and in fact, the whole underlying engine has changed as well. Right, so let us jump in and have a look. So I got this file here, it's a Fuji file. And so let's go and change the profile, which is now in basic. It's no longer down here in camera calibration, uh, which is just calibration now. And so if I click on this, we can see that we now have alternative options. Now, Adobe Standard is just kind of flat. It's a very flat, you can even see the change in contrast when we did that and saturation. So now Adobe Color will be the default and it looks way, way better. Uh, so we also have Landscape, which is obviously a little bit more saturated. Portrait is muted to try and give better skin tones. Uh, we've seen Standard and Vivid, of course, is boom, just a lot more contrast and a lot more saturation. Uh, monochrome as well is just literally the black and white version. So this completely affects how black and white works now in Lightroom and we can see here that as well as having changed here, the profile has changed. We can also see that treatment has now jumped to black and white. So let's jump back to color and look down here at HSL and color. We now see that this just says HSL and color. There's no B and W there. So we click on black and white. This now becomes the B and W black and white panel only. All right, so that's another big change with that. But you're looking here and you can see what I can see and that is that there are no camera matching profiles. So the profiles that will give you your film emulations or your picture styles or your modes, say for Nikon, they're not here. Where are they? Well, if we click browse or if we don't want to click browse and we're actually just doing it really quickly, we can do it from this little icon here, which will open the profile browser. OK, so as we can see here, there's a whole range of sections here. So we have our favorites, then we have the raw based ones and then we have these uh, separate creative ones. So we look at these now in a second. The favorites here, straight off the bat, there's just a whole bunch of the new ones. And we will see straight away one of the coolest thing about it is that as we hover over the thumbnail, we can actually see what it does to the file. And we can also see the name showing up as a bezel here as well. All right, so let me just click on color there for a second. So let's get out of favorites and just have a look at camera raw or Adobe raw rather for a second. So we can see all of these settings here. Actually, let's open favorites at the same time and I'll show you why in two seconds. So we can see that neutral isn't in there. So if I come up here and I just tick on this little star, it gets added. So you can quite easily remove and add stuff to your favorites. Now you can have third party ones. There's a few like Brian Matias, Nicosi and Contrastly, for example. And I will be looking at some from ProLost as well later in the week. And uh, so these can all be added to favorites. So you can get at the ones that you like much, much quicker. All right, so let us just come out of there all together and we go to camera matching. So these are the ones I was talking about. These are the ones that match what's in your camera. So you could have film emulations like you do with Fuji. This is a Fuji file. So if I go to these ones, we can see that we have Astia, uh, Classic Chrome, and we can see as we hover over that it's making all of these changes so that we can see what it looks like. So obviously this is a raw file, so it's not a retouched file. Uh, right. Um, so if this was a, a Canon, you'd have like camera landscape, camera portrait, camera neutral, camera faithful, etc. 
Now, legacy ones, so these are black and white conversions, and the idea is with these is that these look like what used to be Lightroom when you would hit black and white when you had one of the camera matching profiles selected. So it's just trying to give you the look that's similar to that. Now, I don't think with uh, Fuji that you'd been using that because you probably would have been actually using some of the black and white ones here, like Acros anyway. But it's just that if you were using something and you wanted just to have a better match, um, you would use these for the black and whites for those just to match what used to happen when you had one of these profiles selected and then you went to black and white. So next are the artistic ones. Okay, so just for the sake of argument, I'm just going to arrow back to where I know I have a JPEG file. Okay, I think this is a JPEG file. Let me just pr press I to make sure this is a JPEG. So that's a JPEG. So we can see here that we have basic. So we have color and monochrome that we can have as basic applied. And these are in our favorites as well. But we can see that the artistic ones are still able to apply here. So these ones can be applied to raw and to JPEG. All right. Now let's go back to our, J or our raw file, which is a RAF file in this case, and have a look at these. So artistic are just what it says. They're basically split tone kind of cross process looks. And these are there by default. So if we were to apply this and then go look at split toning, the so split toning would still be zeroed. All right. So they're they're based into the actual or baked into the image once they're applied. Okay, so black and white is next. So these are a whole range of different black and white looks. Again, as we hover over, we can see different ones. So if, because I've got this red dress, the different filter system make it more pronounced. That's kind of why I'm using this image as well, because it does become a little bit more, more pronounced with colors. All right, and then we have modern one, which is kind of based off kind of Instagram looks and stuff like that. So I'll just jump to them here really quickly to let you see them. You can look at these yourself in your own time. And then finally, there's some vintage ones, which kind of give you some of the matte fades with a little bit of split toning in them as well, just for stuff that's kind of popular at the moment. So folks, that is a look at what profiles are doing. Now, like I said, there's third party ones and I will look at some third party ones. Um, you can't make these yourself inside Lightroom, um, but you'll be able to make them inside Camera Raw. Uh, I'm not sure when there's going to be an SDK out for that, but I know there will be. Utterly fantastic. Now, did you see the way that we were hovering over to see those? That's brilliant. You know, it's not like with presets, you know, when you're open preset and you're depending on this tiny little thing here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Check this out. Right. Alex. Oh, look at that now. Or oh, let's say go for some high contrast. Let's say go for a retro fade, which is one of my favorite of my own presets for the black and whites. Um, what else have we got? Like so matte seven of these or something like that. So, yes, yeah, so we can actually see what is going on inside the preview here. Right, so the main image area now becomes where you see the preset preview instead of this tiny little thumbnail. That is awesome. It is like the best thing ever. So let's say I wanted to apply, say, Matt seventies, right? And I say, okay, that's a bit strong. Well, I can just go up with my opal, drag it down, pull it back a little bit and click apply. So I can kind of mix those together as well and see straight away what's going on with it. So that is absolutely fantastic. I am so delighted with that. Part of the reason for the change in the way the previews are is because Presets themselves have changed and the location of presets has changed as well. It had been in the developed presets folder uh, inside your Lightroom folder. It's now in a shared location between Camera Raw and Lightroom so that presets in Lightroom can also be used in Camera Raw directly now. Uh, so you probably noticed a dialog box like this one here come up. I call it this one and um, so that I can use it in the tutorials and stuff like that. We can see that it says all the custom develop presets were successfully converted to XMP. So that's telling us a little bit about our presets. Presets used to be uh, Lua files, so they were essentially little programs, and that, of course, is problematic. They're now XMP files, which is just literally a list of text stuff. Um, so if I right-click on this one here, for example, and go Show in Finder, it'll open up a folder, and it'll show me exactly where they are. And we can see that it's inside Settings. And if I Command-click on this, we can see that it's now inside Camera Raw. So Presets are now stored inside Camera Raw and accessible by Camera Raw and by Lightroom as well. But it obviously means that they have, you know, they're different. And so even these ones, though these ones are actually in sections and not in folders, uh, we can see that some of these are here in folders separately, but they're not all necessarily in folders directly. Um, so let me just have a look at user presets. And so this mat.xmp, and let me just open it. So as we can see there, we can see that it looks completely different. 
to what you would have normally seen. So it's literally just exactly the same as the old uh, camera raw presets, basically. So, all right. So on we go. All right. When everything is said anyway with your profile, you click close. Oh, I, there's something I just missed there just very quickly as well. You can also narrow these down, choose just color or black and white. And you've got an option as well to show them as large thumbnails. Uh, let's pull these open here for a second. So you have large thumbnails. Um, and I'm actually going to change that. Oh, I was just waiting for it to change back and go list. So you can have a list of them. Uh, so that's basically it. Uh, so I think it's black and white. So let me just go on all for a second. So you have the full list, grid and large. So those are the options for that, just so that you can see that. So like I said, uh, D Hayes is now in here. Um, so that for some reason thinks that this is a black and white shot. So it's knocked out vibrance and saturations. So let me just reset this all together. Um, uh, actually, I'm going to go to jump to history because I don't want poor Laura looking so. Um, so, so it's there just because I've done a little bit of skin work on it, just so it looks pretty. And so we can see D Hayes is here now. And so, yeah, we have it here just to show us that it's there. Now, D Hayes obviously adds contrast and adds saturation as well. And generally darkens the image. So I would normally boost it after I've used D Hayes. I wouldn't normally use D Hayes on a portrait though because it's not flattering the skin. So that's just showing you that that is moved basically. Uh, now, if we go to the tone curve as well, we can see that the tone curve itself is larger, which is great. I am in love with the new larger tone curve because you can see better basically because it was tiny. All right, so much larger tone curve. All right, the other thing that we're going to quickly look at here is face recognition and um, because it's changed and let me just grab here and go to this and um, I don't have, I haven't got a lot of face recognition done. So I didn't rename this file. That's bold of me. I guarantee that happened when I was doing multiple images in uh, multiple shoots being imported at once. So this is Aoife Nihorish. Aoife is a presenter on Tichi Kara. I shoot a show with her on it. And so I go um, E and we can see here we've got a face region here. So if I click on that, we can see there's a face re region here. OK, there's a new engine. The new engine has a completely different detection method and detects different faces in different ways. OK. So as soon as you start running face detection, it'll be using this new engine again. But what about the old ones? It's not necessarily going to see the old ones, but there is a way to sort that out. And you just come in here and you go find faces again. OK, this brings up this option and tells you that this will discard existing face regions from the selected photos and run new and improved face detection. This operation is not undoable, but you have these options here that skip photos that do have not run face detection previously. So that means if you haven't run it, uh, it won't it won't do it again. All right, so it's not going to run the face detection. And then you can skip photos that include manually confirmed faces. So if it has been confirmed, then it will leave them in there. It's just you're making the new engine aware of them. That's basically it. So the new engine has a higher accuracy rate, basically. So it's worth doing for that if you're doing face recognition. So folks, that is a look at the new features in uh, Lightroom Classic. Uh, now, there isn't a whole lot of bug fixes in this particular re release, but there are some lens and uh, camera additions, obviously, as well, including the Sony a7 or three. Folks, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Please you do subscribe. There's lots of you out there watching this if you haven't subscribed. Um, I'd like to build up the numbers. Be, be hitting 10K would be fantastic because it means that obviously I get more help from YouTube, you know, pushing the channel and stuff like that, which would be great. Um, hit the notification bell if you are subscribed to, you know, see when these videos come online. If you're not familiar, I do stuff on Tuesdays and on Fridays. And folks, that's really it. Um, one thing I will say before I go, though, is that I am working on an update to my book. Here's the camera profile section. And um, so this was essential development, which I last updated at around Lightroom 5. And where am I going back to Lightroom? So I ran in, in Lightroom 5. And then I obviously I wrote the, the book for Rocky Nook. So now I'm just updating this one for Lightroom 7 because I have nothing out for Lightroom 7. So folks, like I said, thanks for taking time to watch this and I'll see you in the next video.